okay folks let's talk a little bit about nx in v and i haven't found uh, too much video about this uh, concept so that's why i am making a video on nx in v actually nx in is a set of proteins so let me talk about the basic feature of nx in it's a set of proteins which are called as the calcium dependent calcium dependent phospholipid calcium dependent phospholipid binding protein binding protein so that's what uh, annexins are all about there are different types of uh, annexin proteins are there like annexin a b and uh, we are talking about annexin v here which is a very important kind of annexin and the importance of this annexin we'll be seeing uh, right now uh, the thing is uh, normally what happens annexin is having a tendency to attach to phospholipids and we know phospholipids are the integral part of uh, cell membrane in uh, all the cells because uh, cell membrane is produced by the phospholipid bilayer so if i draw a cell membrane it will look very much it's very bad drawing so let us draw carefully okay so these are let's say the phospholipids you know phospholipids have two different regions one is a uh, uh, hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tails coming down so these are the phospholipids so this is the say say the outer layer and let us say this is the inner layer of that phospholipids so these are the phospholipids layer remember again phospholi phos i mean hydrophilic head hydrophobic tail they produce this this phospholipid layer so this is the phospholipid or simply termed as the cell membrane layer of ours okay outer inner okay so these are the two layers now what happens actually normally there are certain types of phospholipids preferred to be placed in the outer layer and there are certain type of phospholipid preferred to be placed in the inner layer now what distinguishes between this outer layer and inner layer the thing is if i draw a cell here if i draw a cell there are lipid bilayer so let me draw the bilayer here if this is the bilayer and if i zoom into a part of this section of this it will look something like this right if we zoom into here we can see so inner layer means it's the inner side the cytosolic cytosolic side of that membrane that is called as the inner layer of the membrane and the external side is called as the outer layer of the membrane that is this external side right that's what it's all about this is the cytosol or cytoplasm remember now there are certain proteins preferably not proteins actually certain phospholipid molecules preferably stay in the cytosolic portions and there are certain molecules preferably stay in the external portions for example phosphatidylserine let's say phosphatidylserine so uh, let us take a change the color let's say let's take this this green let's say phosphatidylserine this one's phosphatidylserine phosphatidylserine so this this green colored section these are also phospholipid molecules they are termed as a phosphatidyl phosphatidyl serine so this phosphatidyl serine or simply termed as ps phosphatidyl serine molecule they preferably stay in the cytosolic portion of the cell membrane nor in normal conditions now during the apoptotic condition if you look at apoptosis during apoptotic condition when the apoptotic signal comes in there a systemic change occurs in the cell membrane now normally there are certain you know i've told you that the phosphatidylserine should be placed in the cytosolic portion of the cell membrane and some other molecules are placed in the outer side of the cell membrane this uh, this differentiation is termed as lipid asymmetry and this is very very important it is termed as the lipid lipid asymmetry and it is super important 
for the cell to distinguish between the normal cell and the apoptotic cell. For example, during the apoptosis, when once the cell receives the apoptotic signal, in that condition, there becomes an asymmetric shift and those phosphatidyl serines are translocated from the cytosolic portion to the outer section of the cell membrane. Right? So, after this signal, what we can see is something like that. So, just draw the layer. This is the outer layer, remember. And if I draw the inner layer, it remains like this. So there is a kind of shift there. Okay, let's say this. Okay, so if you look at here, there is a shift, and due to that shift, those phosphatidyl serines are now translocated to the outer layer. So we get phosphatidyl serines at this outer layer places. Right? So here comes the phosphatidyl serines. Phosphatidyl serines used to stay in the cytosolic site and that's natural. But if a cell, if the phosphatidyl serines get translocated to the external unit, to the outer membrane portion, that means the cell is going apoptosis or programmed cell death. Right? So this acts as a signal that the cell is undergoing apoptosis. And annexin V is a protein that will bind with this phosphatidyl serine because you know they are phospholipid binding proteins. So they can bind with this phosphatidyl serine but in the presence of calcium ion. So annexin, let's say these are annexin proteins. Annexin proteins, annexin V. So this annexin proteins will bind with the phosphatidyl serine in presence of calcium ion in presence of calcium ion and as a result we can actually detect the phosphatidyl serine if it is in the outer side of the membrane so we can use this annexin v molecules as a bait to study whether the cell is apoptotic or not right in the preliminary stage of apoptosis once the cell is transferred to the apoptotic condition, annexin V will bind with phosphatidyl serine in the presence of calcium ion and that can be detected. How? For example, if we add any fluorescence tag to this annexin, so we add some fluorescence tag to the annexin and then we put the annexin and also we add calcium we can see that annexin binding with the phosphatidyl serine. And if we see by looking at the fluorescence microscopy, if we watch something like this, let's say it's a cell, let's say cell, if we can see something like that, a cell, cell membrane is there and, and fluorescence coming out for the outer regions of the membrane, that is going to tell us that that cell is undergoing apoptosis because you know as the cell is going under apoptosis in that case only the this this annexin v will bind and as it is fluorescently tagged we can actually visualize them under microscope and that is called the annexin v assay and that can act as the apoptotic assay apoptosis assay so, you may wonder about what is apoptosis assay. We can use annexin V as an element, as a molecule for the apoptotic assay. Annexin V, annexin 5, whatever, we use at apoptotic assay, right? So, that's kind of a very gist about apoptotic assay and annexin 5 and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.